Over the last five years, the cost of power generated by solar panels and wind farms has collapsed. Today, a solar panel is 80% less expensive than it was five years ago, but it's twice as efficient. Subsidies for such renewable power systems are being withdrawn all around the world and the power produced by them is approaching grid parity. For these reasons, you may think that the battle for the renewable revolution has been won. But there are still some problems that remain to be solved. The major problem with renewable power from solar and wind sources is that it is intermittent. At night there is no solar power to be captured and when the wind does not blow there is no energy to be converted by wind turbines. Think of renewable power as low density energy farming, whilst fossil fuels can be thought of as high density energy mining. Today energy mining works best. To change this the first problem to be solved is how to store the energy produced by wind and solar farms. If we could store energy produced in times of abundance, it could be used to cover the gaps when renewable systems aren't producing. But our current generation of batteries are still basic and expensive. Bill Gates said in 2011 that if all the conventional batteries that exist in the world were linked together, and attached to the world's grids, they would provide the world with power for only 10 minutes. But in the same tweet, he hinted at new battery technologies to come. Of course, there are other ways of storing excess power produced by intermittent renewables. When local topography allows, water or heavy weights can be pumped or lifted up mountainsides to be released when required and so generate more electricity. Water can also be pumped underground to gain heat and thus retain energy, but these storage methods are expensive and limited in application. Which brings us back to batteries. In March 2016, there was a very exciting announcement from a US government agency called ARPA-E. The E stands for energy. Ellen Williams, the director of the agency, announced at a Washington conference that companies funded by her research agency had made several major battery breakthroughs. In fact, she described the development as the holy grail of battery design. These new batteries are said to be able to store power on a scale suitable for hooking up to the main electricity grid and to do so economically. Once again, that sounds like job done, but Dr. Williams declined to give any further details about the new batteries, other than saying that they involve new chemistries and they'll soon be reaching the market. We are now on the cusp of solving the storage problem for renewable power. In addition to breakthroughs being made by US government funded researchers, Great progress is also being made in the commercial and academic sectors. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk of PayPal, Tesla and SpaceX fame is already building power wall batteries which allow homes to store renewable power. He has also built the world's largest battery factory in Nevada to produce batteries for storing renewable power. And in Cambridge in the UK, a quiet announcement made at the end of 2015 generated huge excitement. The breakthrough in electrochemistry made at Cambridge University is expected to lead the way to rechargeable super batteries that pack five times more energy into a given space than today's best batteries. Meanwhile, developments at MIT, Harvard and elsewhere also point to a tipping point in battery design being reached. I think it's fair to say that by 2020, the problem of how to store excess renewable energy will have been solved. Which still leaves us with a couple of problems still to be solved. The first is that our electricity grid distribution systems have got to be redesigned. 
They were designed just to distribute power from centralised power stations. Now they have to accept power from many different renewable sources, many different points of input. This can be done, but it will take government intervention. The second problem is that of the vested interests in fossil fuels. Fracking technology is reducing the price of fossil fuels whilst uncovering new accessible deposits. This is not going to stop. So it will take government intervention and aggressive investment to promote renewable energy technology. But I think we're now at a tipping point. I think the combination of low renewable generation costs and economic storage systems will lead us to a clean tech renewable future.